Hello everybody, my name is Aideen Tynan and my colleagues Michelle Finnegan, Catherine Lyons and I are the Guidance Counsellors in Abbey Community College. Welcome to our presentation on further education and training options available to your son or daughter having completed the Leaving Cert. We have included an index of the slides in this presentation. In this presentation, we will discuss the following. Before we look at specific further education and training options, I would like to explain our National Framework of Qualifications, the NFQ. The National Framework of Qualifications allows students to see where their qualifications sit. There are 10 levels in the NFQ from the most basic qualification at level one to the most advanced at level 10. Most of your children already have a level three qualification as they have completed their junior certificate slash junior cycle. They are now working for their leaving certificate. Leaving certificate applied is a level four qualification Leaving Certificate Established and Leaving Certificate Vocational Programme are Level 5 qualifications. Students can move step by step up the framework or can jump from their Leaving Cert to a higher qualification if they have the required results in their Leaving Cert. Level 5 is a certificate. Level six is a higher certificate or advanced certificate. Level seven is an ordinary bachelor's degree. Level eight is an honors bachelor's degree. Levels nine and 10 are postgraduate qualifications. In general, students can only apply for postgraduate qualifications after they have graduated from a level eight degree. We will now look at the non -C The first option that we will look at is Colleges of Further Education. There's a nice clip about Waterford College of Further Education here. Students earn a QQI Level 5 certificate. The next further education and training option that we will look at. The next non-CAO option that we will look at is we will now look at the options. UCAS is the universities and colleges. At Students can apply for a maximum. UNICAS and Medical Poland are two companies which help students to apply for degree courses in universities and colleges in Europe, where they will study through English. There are many degree options available for students. The Medical Poland Admissions Office is an application support service to medical universities in Poland. The Medical Poland Admissions Office represents Polish public medical universities, offering the opportunity to study medicine, dentistry, physiotherapy, pharmacy, nursing and veterinary in English in Poland. More information is available on medicalpoland.ie. We are now going to move on to how to apply for th the CAO is the Central Applications Office. CAO is the application system for applying for most undergraduate courses in third level colleges in Ireland. You can see here the CAO points. I think it's important that we all acknowledge that our Leaving Certificate students are young adults and that the responsibility for applying for third level courses, PLC courses, apprenticeships, etc., is their responsibility. 
The CAO Handbook is available online at cao.ie. It is vital that each student who is applying to the CAO reads the information in this handbook carefully. This handbook outlines all the information about applying to the CAO and gives the CAO codes for each course. The handbook does not provide any information about the specific courses. Students need to research courses of interest carefully using their REACH Plus online career portfolio and the individual college websites. CAO courses are applied for on two separate lists on a single form on www.cao.ie. Level 6 and Level 7 courses are placed on one list. Level 8 courses are placed on a separate list. Up to 10 courses can be applied for on each list. Matriculation means the entry requirements needed for a course. What is required to matriculate for third level colleges? Students need to obtain C, F and P. C is the college or basic requirements. For example, 506 grades for level six or seven courses and two H5 grades plus four O6 or H7 grades for most level eight courses. F is the faculty or course requirements. For example, a H4 in Irish for primary teaching or a H5 in chemistry for veterinary medicine. Here's a very simple example of how the CAO allocates places on their courses. Nine of the applicants fulfilled this requirement. The next thing that the CAO computer will check is how many of those nine applicants have the faculty requirement. For example, a pass in a science subject for nursing. Seven of the applicants fulfilled this requirement. However, there are only five places available on the course. So now the CAO looks at the points that each of these candidates achieved. Places on the course are now allocated, starting with the candidate who achieved the highest points and working through the applicants in order of merit. Three hundred and twenty five points is therefore in this example that candidate. Here is an example of how the CAO allocates courses. As you can see, it is extremely important that students list their courses in genuine order of preference. Students should place their dream courses at the top of their CAO list, courses that they have a realistic chance of getting in the middle of their list, and their safety net courses at the bottom of their list. All courses should be placed. Regarding students with language exemptions, after completing the CAO application. Thank you very much, Ms. Tynan. My name is Michelle Finnegan. So Susie is the first for those with limited income. So students applying for a post-leaving certificate. Now, in order to be eligible for a grant, there are a number of conditions. So if you qualify, for a grant, you 
for means for means usually the assessment is that going around oh it is look yeah for assessment for the entitlement to a student grant is based on the income from the previous year of assessment for means usually the assessment for entitlement to a student grant is based on the income from the previous year of assessment. This means that SUSE assesses a person's entitlement to a grant for the academic year 2023 based on income declared in 2022. It is important to note, however, if there are any changes in circumstances, SUSE must be contacted as these changes may be taken into account. For means, usually the assessment for entitlement to a student grant is based on the income from the previous year of assessment. This means that SUSE assesses a person's entitlement to a grant for the academic year 2023 based on income declared in 2022. It is important to note, however, if there are any changes in circumstances, SUSE must be contacted as these changes may be taken into account. For means, usually the assessment for entitlement to a student grant is based on the income from the previous year of assessment. This means that SUSE assesses a person's entitlement to a grant for the academic year 2023 based on income declared in 2022. It is important to note, however, if there are any changes in circumstances, SUSE must be contacted as these changes may be taken into account. For means, usually the assessment for the entitlement to a student grant is based on the income from the previous year of assessment. This means that SUSE assesses a person's entitlement to a grant for the academic year 2023 based on income declared in 2022. It is important to note, however, if there are any changes in circumstances, SUSE must be contacted as these changes may be taken into account. Next, we have looked at the average cost of going to college. Hopefully you have all been putting for this expense. When you look at rent, food, travel, etc., it is working out at about between 11,000 and 13,000 per year. Obviously, costs in Dublin are greater. However, we are very lucky here in Waterford to have an excellent theological university an excellent agricultural college in Kildalton and an excellent PLC college, Waterford College of Further Education on our doorstep. Next, we have looked at the average cost of going to college. Hopefully, you have all been putting money aside for this expense. When you look at rent, food, travel etc it is working out at about 11,000 and 13,000 per annum obviously costs in Dublin are greater however we are very lucky here in Waterford to have an excellent technological university in SETU an excellent agricultural college in Kildalton and an excellent PLC college, Waterford College of Further Education. In relation to the higher education grants, adjacency refers to the distance from your normal residency and your college. If you are eligible for a maintenance grant, 
it will be paid at either the adjacent or non-adjacent rate. The adjacent rate is less than 30 kilometres from your home to college and the non-adjacent rate is more than 30 kilometres from home to college. Now, income thresholds change in relation. Now I'm moving on to look at other supports. The HERE scheme, the higher education. So there. The Who can apply for DARE? There are quite a number of disabilities under the DARE scheme. Now, how to apply for DARE. Any student applying for DARE must indicate it on their CAO form. Students must have all the necessary information returned to CAO office for the 15th of March. Students will be notified what information is needed once they tick the box for DARE on their CAO form. And it is the student's responsibility to ensure all information is returned to CAO. Your evidence of disability is it's important to note that any, any student applying under the disability category must provide reports. So for ADD and ADHD, a psychological assessment report will be required, which has to be completed by a psychologist or in the case of a significant ongoing illness, um, the students may need to get the evidence of disability form completed by an appropriate professional. For dyslexia and dyscalculia, the evidence of disability is very important. So applicants with dyslexia or significant literacy difficulties submit a full psychological, psychological assessment or they can fill in section D, the school statement and an educational impact. In addition to this, however, the student must have two literacy attainment scores at or below the 10th percentile. And that testing must be carried out on or after the 1st of February 2021. With dyscalculia or significant numeracy difficulties, the applicant must submit a psychological assessment report signed off by a qualified psychologist and an educational impact statement. In addition, the applicant must also have one numeracy attainment score at or below the 10th centile. And that must be, the test must be carried out again from after the 1st of February, 2021. So what supports are available? The HERE scheme. To be eligible for HERE, you must meet the HERE income limit plus the right combination of two other indicators to be eligible. So you must meet the household income and for this year it is on or below €46,790 Euro plus a combination of two other indicators to be eligible. More information can be found about the HERE and DARE scheme can be found on the following websites www.cao.ie and accesscollege.ie. There will also be an, an application information day on Saturday the 14th of January. The DARE information session will start at 10 o'clock in the morning 
and the hear information session will start at 12 30. both of those sessions will be recorded and the recording will be will be available um, to view on the accesscollege.ie website. Now we'll move on to college supports. There is a wide variety of scholars. As I mentioned earlier, we are very lucky to have SETU on our doorstep. Now, while South, the Southeast Technological University participates in both the HERE and DARE scheme. It also runs a separate support access route program called REACH. So in order to be eligible to apply to the REACH program, students must fulfill certain criteria and they're listed here on the slide be either in state care, be a single parent, a young carer, the applicant's family must be a member of an ethnic minority, or the applicant's family is a member of another minority group, like traveller community, or of traveller extraction, or LGBT. If students are interested in applying, they must have Their CAO application by the 1st of February. The REACH applications will be available from both myself and Miss Tynan from the 7th of February. This is an excellent access programme as it provides students with fabulous supports including financial assistance, an excellent mentoring programme and it also, what the student could also get into a course in SETU on less points than would normally be needed. Now, wherever your son or daughter the tips we give to students is myself and Miss Tynan regularly update the guidance team. Your son and daughter are members of that team and I recommend that all sixth years keep a close eye on teams for all updates in relation to career matters. And finally, Myself and Miss Tynan would recommend that all students research their course options thoroughly to explore all the avenues and definitely do not ignore the option of blended learning. Talk to the guidance counsellor. Myself and Miss Tynan have been meeting all the sixth years over the last number of weeks. We still have some sixth years to meet, but every single sixth year student will have um, a one-to-one -one appointment with their uh, allocated guidance counsellor. For students not to miss out on any deadlines, apply online to the CAO or directly to the College of Further Education. To remember, they must tick the Susie, Dare or Here box if appropriate. To put courses down in genuine order of preference, obtain or retain proof of application if you're um, once you're applying and research financial supports and be very very careful with the change of money. On behalf of Miss Tynan and myself I would like to thank you 